It's time for the absolutely... <laughs> I'm on my way! Completely! I'm almost there! Random! Why are there so many stairs? Podcast! Oh, jeez! With Andrew Rhodes. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first podcast of the new year. That's right, it's Saturday, January 1st, 2022, and I'm your host, Andrew Rhodes, here on the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. So what are we going to talk about to start off the new year? Well, believe it or not... (laughs) <laughs> uh, Pokemon card prices are continuing to soar, especially in Japan, as they become investments. And I was made fun of back in high school for investing in Yu-Gi-Oh. You can suck my dick now, you jackasses. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I said he could bite me. Logan Paul is once again making <clears throat> news as he's encased 15 Game Boy colors in resin to make a Pokemon tabletop. Yeah, people are freaking pissed. <laughs> I freaking... <laughs> I, I kind of agree on that. Uh, next to fruit, but next to fruits basket, this has to be one of the most hated anime series I think I have, and that's Pop Team Epic, and it's revealed as season two planned for 2022. No, God, I hate this show. I I can't even begin to tell you how much I hate this show. It just sucks. Speaking of anime, though, uh, how about some multiverse anime crossovers? Yeah, there's a few of them that apparently we'd go mad for, and there's three of them here on the list, one of which I'll agree with, two of which I'll question. And speaking again of anime, I seem to be going down the anime train this uh, week for this topic, for well, for this podcast, because here's what's happening in 2022 according to anime. By the way, this is for... Like, stuff that has happened in anime series that has happened in the year 2022. So, time to see if this one holds up on, like, uh, Back to the Future, where we I'm still missing my hoverboard. I'm still missing the flying cars. Uh, I want to see Rocky 5000. Oh, sorry, that was Spaceballs. <laughs> my bad. My bad. That was Spaceballs. <laughs> anyway, all this and more this week on the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. Before we go any further, I'm sure you know what to say here and now. As always, this is what I say every time. Check out my eBay page, A-R-H-O-A-D-S hyphen 2012 on eBay. I have a wide variety of stuff for sale from DVDs, video games, action figure parts, you name it, I probably got some trading cards. One person's junk is always another person's treasure. Come on, swing by the worldwide flea market and come buy my little stand in it. I'm Andrew on there. It's A R H O A D S hyphen 2012 on eBay. Come on by, say hi. Or just come by and check out what I got. I mean, I know I don't have a lot up because I've been trying to get this. I've been trying to get back into getting more of it up, but time has not been on my side for a lot of things, okay? It's true. But anyway. Come on by, check out my eBay page, and while you're surfing the information superhighway, check out Twitterville. That's right, I am on Twitter, at Otaku Roads. That is the at symbol, the one above the number two, capital O-T-A-K-U, capital R-H-O-A-D-S. Over on Twitter, you can also check out the official Web Designer 18 Facebook page. Like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell here on YouTube. And don't forget, I also have Patreon and Kofi if you want to help support the channel. Because you know, God knows, I have to. I have to try to support this thing somehow. I mean, I don't want it to die. <laughs> I'm trying to get everything done with everything else I have to do. I'm trying. I'm working on it. I'm doing the best I can. I'm a one-person show here. I do everything alone. I'm a one-person show. Uh, but yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell so you can be made aware of when new videos drop right here on the Web Designer 18 YouTube channel. All right, so this is the part where we go. How'd your week go, Andrew? Um, it could have been a little better. So, uh, yeah, we got some COVID shit happening at work. <laughs> this is the saddest. That's the sad thing to start it off with. It's <laughs> going on. Um, uh, we got the one person had to get tested. Uh, I think the one person's still out, and we're not sure yet because they haven't been following uh, the one protocol, letting us know. So yeah, there's just a lot of shit going on for that. So yes. It's still going, and I was aware I saw this yesterday, so I'm going to say it. I'm gonna, I know I'm going to get shit for this in the comments, but I'm just going to say it. Okay, and this is my own opinion. Okay, and I'm going to say this. 
Betty White is gone! Woo! Finally! I'm sorry. I never liked her as an actress. I'm sorry. I'm sorry! I apologize to anybody that liked her. I'm not a fan of hers. I was never a fan of hers. Um, you should have heard me when I saw that Friday. <laughs> I saw that yesterday afternoon. Or yesterday evening when I was checking out Twitter. And I'm like, she's dead! She's dead! And I'm like screaming, hooting, hollering. And screw the crap out of my mom. And she's like... What the hell is going on out there? Like, What's wrong? She thought I was like, I finally won something in my one game, and I'm like, no, Betty White's dead. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, my mom kind of thought this. She's like, you know, it would have really been um, an ironic twist of fate if <laughs> she would have survived uh, to the 17th of January for her for her uh, birthday thing, came out on stage, and then just like <laughs> right then and there. <laughs> that would have been. I'm like, yeah, that would have been. That would have been. Um, Ironic. But yes, so I do apologize to anybody that uh, is a fan of Betty White. Uh, this might offend you, but uh, I'm not a fan of hers. Okay? I never was. You just have these people in your life, you like celebrities, and that you just don't like. Uh, for me, she was one of them. Even I, I, And to be fair, I grew up watching the Golden Girls because my grandmother wanted to watch it, and... When she has control of the TV remote, you have no say in it. We butted heads a few times on uh, the TV, and that's what uh, prompted the, you know what? You have a TV in your room. Go watch it in your room. Stay in there. Because we were butting heads about the TV multiple times, and she wanted to watch the Golden Girls, so I had to watch the Golden Girls. I don't think um, somebody, I think I was like 10 at the time, I want to say. Like, I was like nine or ten, maybe even eight. I don't think that per that that young of a person should be watching a show like that. But then again, I grew up watching William Shatner's Rescue Nine One One. So what the hell do I know? I grew I grew up watching uh, more adult uh, programs and dramas. So what the hell do I know? I turned out, I turned out okay. Yeah, I turned out okay. I turned out all right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was that. Um, all in all, though, uh, everything worked out pretty good. Christmas went uh, extremely well for us. Uh, I was actually shocked at that. <laughs> I was shocked Christmas went uh, Christmas went well. I was really happy. Um, I did want to... So I had to work Christmas Eve. I was hoping to record the podcast on Christmas Eve and track Santa, but I had to work Christmas Eve. I had to be there at 7, and I was working till I think it was 12... I want to say, that sounds about right. I I actually have to double check my piece of paper at home. I have my schedule on because of a because of a little glitch in our system. We don't. Uh, I can't use our lovely little app, which is fine by me. But um, I wanted to record Christmas Eve, and I wasn't able to do that because Christmas Eve night, I'm like, I'm too damn tired. I'm just I just went to bed. But uh, hopefully, though, I've been told this so many times that hopefully, and there's air quotes there. <laughs> there's air quotes, hopefully, uh, things will be getting back to a more normal uh, -ness at work, but I doubt that highly. So it looks like I'm going to be getting more hours at work, which means I'm going to have less time uh, to myself to do fun little recordings that I want to do. So, yay. It just sucks. <laughs> There's like so much I have to do. <laughs> It really bugs. I mean, if you love something, you make the time for it. But for the love of God, it's just bugging the hell out of me. But yes, um, I'm trying. I'm trying my damnedest to get every to get this channel better. Uh, would I love for this channel to be sustainable, like a some type of a source of income? Yeah, I, I, that'd be great. But it's never gonna fucking happen. That'll <laughs> never. That'll never happen. Uh, the final age rants uh, did go up. So I'd like to thank everybody for. Uh, Contributing for that. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the little message I put at the end of it. Um, but yes, so that's pretty much been my week. Um, yeah. So without any further ado, let us jump into the podcast and get started, shall we? Because it's going to be a fun one. So well, let's go back in time for a moment here. Let's go back to, I want to say, the early, uh, early, early, early. 
uh, 2000s, you know, when Pokemon cards were everywhere. They were somewhat difficult to find. And my mom's one relation told my grandfather, don't let him get into that stuff. That was like the late 90s. I was in fourth grade uh, when Pokemon started hitting the trading card scene. I remember that summer I got my first pack ever of trading cards. My first ever pack of Pokemon cards. And ironically, years later, I come upon the Zapdos that I traded away to somebody stupidly, and I ended up buying it back for two bucks. So go figure on that one. It's a small world. It really was a small world. Uh, and it was the exact same one, too. I was shocked at that. So it's like it came back to me. I had to buy it back, but it came back to me. <laughs> but anyway... um, so take, think back there and think back to the time when your parents, your loved ones, your friends, they looked at you and said you were stupid for spending your allowance on trading cards. They're like, no, 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 they're not going to be worth shit. You're wasting your money. It's kitty crap for the mine. That's all you're wasting your money on. And ironically, I said that in front of some state cops once and uh, they mis they way misheard me. <laughs> They way misunderstood me. I'm like, yeah, I spent my money on Kitty Crack for the mine. And then I looked at my mom like, what does she take about back and explain to him the difficulties and the badness of drugs? And she's like, no, 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 you way misunderstood him. He does not spend his money on drugs and alcohol. He spends his money on trading cards and video games. Oh, yeah, we really misunderstood that. Yeah. A kitty crack for the mind, not kitty crack for the body. But, uh, basically, yeah, basically, I, I don't go shopping at Spencer's. <laughs> basically. So, anyway, uh, think back, though, to that point in time when you bought loads of Pokemon cards or Yu Gi Oh! I'm going to even throw Yu Gi Oh! cards in this because you can't tell me that those uh, bastards aren't valuable at this point either. So, both of those. I'm going to throw Yu Gi Oh! in this too because I got a whole shit ton of Yu Gi Oh! cards I'm trying to get up to on eBay. But,. Think back to the Pokemon days. Think back to when you bought... Think back to that giant binder that you had under your bed. Now, for me, I never had that. But I, I had it, like, above the bed. It was on a shelf or just sitting out. But think back to that binder of cards that you had. And you're like, it's just a bunch of commons, a bunch of, you know, semi-rares. Nothing massive. But to you, they were valuable. They were just... They were like the best thing you could ever have in the world. You would throw yourself in front of that if somebody were going to go after it with a flamethrower. You would just throw yourself in front of it and shield it with your body so that it would survive, but you would die. Now, remember everybody that told you you were an idiot and basically flip them off because Pokemon cards are becoming investments now <laughs> as the prices are soaring in Japan. And I actually have some Japanese ones. Uh, yay! <laughs> Our Pokemon cards getting so expensive in Japan uh, that they become investments for adults and are out of the reach of kids? Uh, yeah, uh, probably. <laughs> I mean, how well, over here in the States, we've already had uh, people fighting each other for them. There have been uh, muggings in parking lots. And it's just taking me, harking me back to the 90s when there's a freaking newspaper article about the dangers of Pokemon card collecting. It's like, don't let him get into this. Yeah kiss my ass. I'm getting into it. <laughs> it's just like, I just love how, uh, <laughs> I just love how it's like, yeah, I got like, you know, all these cards. Like, yeah, I got this. Like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And yeah, I have all these. But there was like an article that was like, yeah, no, shouldn't get into this because there's muggings. People are getting killed over these cards. Yeah, well, fast forward a few decades or I have that same problem again. <laughs> Only now they're worth a lot of money. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, apparently... <laughs> Uh, these are concerns that were raised by journalist Yuki Takahashi and published in the English edition of the Japanese paper, uh, the Mainchi uh, Simbun. I kind of remember that from somewhere before. Uh, but Takahashi reports, though, about how some individual cards are going for upwards of $88,000 uh, while visiting stores in Akihabara. The journalists found shop after shop completely sold out of cards. Some shops mentioned a lottery system for cards because so many people want them. Oh, yeah, lottery systems work so well. Let us remember uh, Jingle All the Way. Yes, the lottery system. <laughs> you're going to draw, we're going to get a ball, we're going to draw lots. And due to the price of supply and demand, <laughs> if you curb the law of supply and demand, the new list price reached figure just doubled. That's against the law, by the way, because I did take economics. That is against the law. 
You, can, you cannot raise the price of something just because a lot of people want it. That is against the law. Uh, I do I do know that. I took, I took economics. Um, yeah, but finally, Takahashi found a store selling cards, but they were locked up tight and going for prices like $2,200, $4,400, and $8,800, respectively. And these cards themselves are worth about $0.88, cents, according to the manufacturer. That's basically like, look, we're literally printing someone else's money. You, look, you buy the cards, that's fine. You people want to go nuts about it, you be my guest. It's like, look, we're still getting our cut of this. You're buying the packs of cards. We're printing them. We're making our money. You guys want to kill each other for them? You be my guest. Here, you guys want a super duper rare? Um, it's a, it's Charizard and Pikachu in one card. It's a combo card. It's both electric and flying type. And it's three types, electric, flying, and thunder. Come, uh, electric, flying, and fire. Come on. How would you like this? Um, 25 grand. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. That's... <laughs> Uh, it's basically a feeding frenzy. Uh, a person in the trading card business is quoted as saying, it's very likely that the price will go over 20 million yen, uh, some $176,000 in the future, but that's just way too much, another person in the trading card business said, referring to rare Charizard cards. No, th I can see that. And I mean, I, so long as this, as long as we're not talking like PSA graded bullshit, because that is crap. If we're talking like standard, I could pull a fucking card out of my goddamn pack at home, and this thing's like eight hundred thousand dollars sold, sold, sold. Hey, I'm richer than you now. Yeah, I could see that happening. I mean, this is something that I could see people investing in, and just like, hey, look. Remember that thing from my childhood that I held on to for the longest time because you said it was a piss poor investment? Let me tell you how rich I am from my yacht. <laughs> but yeah, basically. I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh, some individuals are literally investing uh, through Pokemon cards, one investor explained. With the coronavirus pandemic, uh, their bonus went to zero, so I started Pokemon card investing. I made almost 1 million yen, or about $8,777.70 from it. That's not bad. Now, like I said, I got a shit ton of cards at home. I got some Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I got some Pokemon cards, too. And I have been trying my damnedest. I shit you know, I've been trying my damnedest to get these cards up online to get pictures of them, to put them up for sale, so I can try to get something for these things. It's like, look, they're not super rare. They're not, you know, very valuable. Some of them are beat to hell because I got them, you know, in a lot from some jackass at a flea market, or I got some from a friend of mine who's, um, I think it was, yeah, was her, uh, yeah, her niece had a whole bunch of them, and after I sold a couple of them, we're like, yeah, no. I sold a couple for, and that was years ago, and she never came around for the damn money until they had to basically twist her arm. And she's like, yeah, whatever you get for them, go for it. But it's like, Jesus Christ, I'm just like, holy hell. I, I find this amazing that the cars are still going up in price yet. Anecdotally, though, uh, Takahashi said a lot of collectors and investors appeared to be people who got into Pokemon when they were kids. A survey of these collectors had them saying things like, I got back into characters I really liked as a child, and I have a lot more buying power now than I did when I was a child. Well, yes, because back in the 90s, when this came out, we didn't have the ultimate cheat code for buying stuff. It's called the credit card. You know what uh, mobile gamers use to uh, basically flip off the people like me who play for free? It's called the credit card. We buy loot boxes and shit. You know, nowadays it's like, hey, look, I have a, like, I have some extra money. I, I, I don't have kids who are going to be interested in this. And my kids are, yeah, they're screwed in their own. Hey, I got the magic credit card. Yay, it's mine. It's all mine. It's old. Yeah. It makes sense as far as I'm concerned. But, uh... But as one current child told uh, Takahashi, it's really hard to get new cards, so I just can't beat my friends no matter how much I play. Oh, it's, it's, see, this is the thing. And this is the thing that I will always stand by when it comes to trading card games. There are three types of players. You have the collectors that will buy the cards and collect the hell out of them. They will hoard them. They will never trade them, and if they do, you're going to pretty much have to... It's like going to a Mafia Don for a favor. you got to kiss the ring, you get to you know, kiss their ass, call it ice cream, and then you make the deal. You have the expert player, the one that basically is like, I can do anything with anything, and then you got the casual player that's like, well, my character sucked, I need to get better cards. 
you can beat anything depending upon what cards you get. I, I will throw Yu-Gi-Oh! into this again. I'll use that as a prime example here. If you have, let's say, one of the original decks, yes, that you would have to get newer cards. For one, there's a lot of erratas now that have been done, changes to the cards and stuff like that, but there's a lot more cards out there that can kick their asses now. Just pick up a couple booster packs and it's really easy. For Pokemon, you can actually beat your opponent depending upon how you play your cards. It's called strategy. Yes, an occasional new card might make a difference, but that's when you call trading. Hence the trading cards. And the first letter, trading <laughs> cards. You trade some of the cards. Like, look, I really want a somewhat better card than I have. I have four of these and six of these that are useless to me. Can I trade them to you for one good one? Or for like one or two cards? And, you know, you work out a trade. That's how trading works. It's like, look, I have six of this commodity. I'd like to trade you for five of this commodity. You're coming up one ahead of this, and I'm coming up five ahead of what I need. See how it works. I mean, that's, that's in my opinion. That's how it works. But this is interesting. I, I'm not going to lie. Um, as far as, like, the prices, yeah, let me check eBay, because I know there's, like, um, the secondary markets are just going crazy, uh, with the whole aspect of the freaking Pokemon cards right now. They are just going nuts, uh, with them. Hold on. So I know that, I, I know the secondary markets, like, eBay and Amazon are actually going pretty, uh, wild with them. Um, but yeah, they got like there's like a promo card here, a uh, Japanese Pikachu card. Oh, it's really cute. It's really ugly looking too. Unopened. Uh, yeah, it's really cute and ugly. Uh, it's going for like twenty five bucks. Uh, there's like a whole bunch of them here. You get like there's people that are selling them in like lots of a hundred. Um, some that are listing like fifty official TCG cards, but you gotta read the description, so it's like you're only getting one. Uh, there's like a base set. You choose the card, going for anywhere from ninety nine cents to ten bucks. Oh, man, I gotta see that. There's freaking Charizard in there. I th I get the feeling that, that one's not gonna be like ten bucks though. Probably not. Probably. I mean, let me, hold on, let's see here. Uh oh yeah okay. You select card condition. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Of course. Of course. All the good ones are already sold out. Yeah. Uh huh. That makes freaking sense now. Uh huh. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, they're already gone. Most of the most of the good ones are already gone. Of course they are. Somebody's selling them for ten bucks. Uh it's like a card gust of the wind. Or sorry, gust of wind. Yeah, okay. Wow, that's going for uh also like condition and near mint, based on limited, and it's ninety nine cents. Alright, let's check uh hmm. Oh, let's check my mom's favorite, Diglett. Oh wow, Diglett's going for a buck nine. Woo! Woo, Dick is going for a dollar nine. But yeah, like a lot of them are grayed out, so there's not that many that are left here. Uh, which, you know, that makes sense. I mean, given what it is, it makes sense. Uh, but there's like a Charizard, Blastoise, and Venusaur three-card set. Uh, it's going for like 15 bucks. Honestly, it doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty cool. Uh, would I get it? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> like, like that. Would you get it? Hell no. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to spend the money on goddamn Pokemon cards. I have, I have a shit ton of Yu-Gi-Oh cards at home. <laughs> Plus, I mean, I can see this going for, like, the original sets, like I said, because you got to keep in mind, with trading cards, they do reprint these. So when they reprint a card, that drops the value of the card. Now, does that make the card easier to get? Yes, it makes the card easier to get because then you're getting two different versions. You're getting, okay, either A, you're getting version A, which is the original, or you're getting the newer version. If you're getting the newer version, yeah, that's going to take a little bit of the value off. It's going to take a bit of the sting off, but here's the deal. And I don't want to say it. Here's the deal. When you get ones like that, well, when you get cards like that, there are the chances that 
you know, somebody's going to say, oh, hey, you got the really rare one, and then you screw them. Well, no, you don't have the really rare one. You have the updated version one. Because if it's like an older pack, well, the older cards become a little harder to find. So they reprint those because, hey, look, people really like the older set. We still have the images for it. Let's reprint it with a fresh, you know, new symbol right here in the corner. Boom, that tells you that this is a newer version of the older card. But yeah, but there's a Charizard here going for like a uh, 200 bucks. Um, yeah, I, I and that was a base set one too. Yeah, so they're they're gonna go for a lot of money. That that's the problem, and I really hate to say it, that is the problem. You're gonna have the cards that are gonna go for a lot of money. They're gonna go for huge amounts of cash. You're gonna have people that are gonna be investing in this stuff. Just don't. As far as PSA bullshit, I don't believe in. I I don't buy any of that crap. As far as beans, I refuse to buy any of that crap you could tell me oh well psa grading no you have to pay them to do that and then you still run the risk of it not uh panning out to be the way you want uh no way i, I would never do it and there's some uh japanese ones on here. here's the japanese mewtwo the japanese mew card Actually, i think it's just a regular mew card uh dark machamp uh there's a haunter and an aerodactyl uh, it's going on here for like 25 bucks right now. So, yeah, that's not bad, actually. I still like that Mew card. Never owned that one, though. But, yeah, I mean, these are things that people had bought years ago. Now, uh, I should say, what's the most? I should really check to see. Uh, oh, wow, over $20. Now, let's, I really hate doing it this way because I know it's going to do this for like the rest of my thing. But let's check uh, price. Let's go max. Max two thousand dollars. You have any biters in that category? If I take away the uh, twenty dollars, so zero to two thousand. Do I have any biters at all? all right, let me start it off at two grand. I'm just kind of curious if there's any for that. Okay, here we go. I was like, there's got to be something out here that's going for this much. Yeah, okay. It's like a freaking PSA grade. Uh, there's a mint crystal ho-oh uh, Sky Ridge e-reader card. Yeah, okay, that would be rare. Um, a level X complete collection is going for like 2500 bucks. There's an unopened jungle and foster and fossil booster boxes that are going for almost seven grand, And that's coming out of Germany. Uh, there's, holy Jesus Christ! <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, Pokemon base set complete cards for, in the United Kingdom right now. Um, 102 of 102, all the cards. Now, granted, they're PSA 10. So, again, PSA 10. Uh, going for a whopping uh, $440,196.25 with the $270.89 uh, shipping costs from the UK. Holy... Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, there is a Charizard uh, that's going for like three grand. Zero bids on it, of course. Uh, there's another one here going for $6,500. Or best offer. <laughs> or best offer. <laughs> or best offer. Uh, you got like Shining Charizard. There's a uh, first edition Blastoise going for twenty five grand. Um, yeah, no, that ain't going to freaking get anything. There's a first edition factory sealed Machop. Uh, going for thirty thousand dollars or best offer. Uh, yeah, it, it's just mostly what people are gonna put them down for. Keep in mind, you still have to pay eBay fees yet, so you're not exactly gonna be making a shit ton of money on this. <laughs> you're gonna be making a, you're gonna be making money, but you're not gonna be making the full amount. Uh, but yeah, there's just a lot here. Uh, I can see like there's like five thousand. There's a Charizard going for ten thousand or best offer. Uh, but of course that one's signed, so that would make sense. Uh, Nido King going for five thousand. There's one that's going for three million dollars. Oh my! Oh yeah, okay. The Holy Grail, uh, Pikachu Illustrator PSA nine mint, uh, most valuable Pokemon card going for three million dollars on eBay. I'm not even joking. Three million dollars on eBay. Buy it now. Free shipping. Uh, it's even P. It's PSA nine. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't buy the PSA bullshit. There's a Kangas, a trophy Kangaskhan card. Of course, of course they had down PSA Parent and Child Tournament then too. Uh, PSA ten, which you can't have a PSA ten. You're literally pulling it right off the goddamn uh, 
line because you're never going to – never. Uh, that's going for almost $500,000. There's one that's going for a quarter of a million. Oh, no, almost a quarter. I'm sorry, half of a quarter of a million. Um, yeah, it's a Cinderace card. Um, yeah, there's a $2 million Pikachu card going, too. There's a Pikachu Trophy card, a $22,000 Chansey card. So, yeah, I can see these being worth money. I can, I can see these being worth money. I can. I see them being worth money. Do I see them being worth um, this much? No. Not in your... No. Not in your life. I don't see them being worth this much money. Oh, but they're PSA created. That, that means nothing. PSA means nothing. That means you paid somebody to tell you your card's worth this much. It's, it's meaningless to me. But, um, yes. No, I don't really care. It's... Who, who cares? But yes, there are cards that are going for this much. Um, holy, there's like a $20,000 Pikachu card, $10,000 Pikachu card. Uh, yeah, so I can see these things being investable. There's one here going for $600,000, but it's a trophy card. Now, the trophy cards I can see being worth some money. I really could because they are worth a lot of money because there's a, that is what you would consider a rare card. It's rare for a reason. It's a trophy card. It's not supposed to be this oh here look I got it for like 5 cents in a pack. No. Uh but are these things investable? But yeah, I would consider them an investment because people are going to pay money for them depending on what you got. I mean, like I said, you would be the same way at this point now. Trading cards are hot commodities right now and it's just a matter of how you look at it. But yeah, they're worth money. I I believe it. I believe it. All right, let's get into this freaking Logan Paul bullshit. So, here we go again. Uh, the guy just does not know when to stop. <laughs> I'm just going to say he does not know when to stop. So, there are some classic Nintendo portables that are now imprisoned in his latest arts and crafts project, and they will be forever stuck in this resonant hell because he has encased 15 Game Boy Colors in resin to make a Pokemon tabletop, and people are pissed. Now, to be fair, there are artists out there that will do stupid things and will invoke the wrath of many. There's nothing you can do about that. You cannot please every single person in the world. And for games like, for, for game consoles like this, First off, they're hard as hell to find parts for. Most of them, now, I can know somebody out there is going to hit the comment section. Let me stop you here. It is possible to get parts from. I'm talking original parts, not third-party parts. Okay, Not the remake parts that people have been making because it's so difficult to find the original hardware. Okay? Now we got that clarified. Okay? But yes, you have those... Uh, people that are like, look, let me, you know, buy 20 of this. I mean, you can pick up a Game Boy Color real cheap. I mean, you can get them on, e you can get them on eBay, on Amazon, thrift stores. Uh, there was an old video game store that I um, frequented years ago before I went to GameStop and then before I stopped going to GameStop then afterwards. Um, they actually had, this is where I had gotten a Game Boy Color for my one cousin. Then his mom went and got him a freaking DS. And it's like, oh, well... Now, I'm st now my mom and I are stuck with this thing. And it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, I wanted a DS. Yeah. I wanted a family that didn't suck. But uh, we don't always get what we want in life. I mean, my mom's great. Some of the rest of the family members, though, uh, kind of get wearing on your nerves after a while. <laughs> Cousins included. But, um, yeah, so th it's just a matter of perspective. But when it comes to these older cartridge-based game systems, they are a pain in the ass to get original parts for. And if you're somebody that you don't trust the third-party parts, or you don't trust, or you want to try to make this like, you want to restore this thing to like its original glory, or you just need like this or this, sometimes the third-party parts are the only way you're going to go. Like, oh, the let's say the cartridge reader itself. The board, the board for the freaking cart for the console itself is fucked. You might be better off getting an actual, you know, third party one because at least you know it'll work. But if you're using like used consoles that the systems don't work, that's fine. These were apparently not that. 
And I can understand why people are pissed, because you're taking perfectly good consoles and you're banishing them to hell. That would be like me taking a mountain of PS5s and making a bed out of them, or a throne. First off, I'm broke because I just spent all my money on a fucking P on massive amounts of PS5s to build a throne. I've glued them together. I fucked the hard drives. I've royally ruined hundreds of game consoles to make a chair. If anybody out there would do that, you would be invoking the ire and wrath of some fans. You'd be invoking pissed off rage from people in general. But yes. So you ever do something in your home and think it's cool and then you share it with other people online to get just to get roasted by it? Yeah, well, guess what? <laughs> That's what's happening to Logan Paul, the guy that just not, he just does not know when to quit when he's ahead. Or in this case, behind. Oh, you're dead last in the race. Look, we don't care if you cross the finish line anymore. We don't care if you cross the finish line. I don't care if you cross the finish line. Just keep going. Just, just stop. It's like, I wore a Pokemon card to the Mayweather fight. It's not worth millions of dollars. You wore a Pokemon card to a fight. It's not worth anything more than it was. It might be worth maybe one or two grand more than it was beforehand. That's about it. It ain't worth millions of dollars. It might be maybe, maybe one or two grand more. That's it. One or two grand. Does not equate millions. But anyway, he posted this project of his on TikTok and shared a clip with it on Twitter. On December 26th. So basically you ruined everybody's day after Christmas. And um. Oh god yeah no. You, you sick bastard. Uh, you took you took 15 Game Boy Colors. Including what appeared to be the limited edition Pokemon themed one. And a, and a dandelion yellow version. Oh you sick bastard. <laughs> and encased them in multiple pounds of epoxy resin. So that they are now fucked. Because uh, first off, that stuff, if it gets into, well, it could easily get into the card reader unless you have a cartridge in it. And even if you have a busted cartridge in it, uh, it's going to seep in because those things are never airtight. And this is a liquid. It will seep in. It is just fried. It, it, that will fry every single one of those chips on that motherboard. So congratulations. You just created, you just bricked a whole bunch of consoles. After positioning and covering the consoles in gel, he wrapped the tabletop with a metal Pokeball frame. You sick son of a bitch. So there's a little video here on his Twitter thing, which is in the article of him uh, doing this. Oh my god, he literally dipped them all. Oh, you... Oh, oh, oh god, no, 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 oh my god, no, stop! Somebody stop the man! Oh my god, no. Oh, why? What? Oh my god, why? No! Oh my god, why? Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, good. Oh, and then he took a blowtorch to it, too! Oh, you sick, sick, oh, you sick fuck! Oh, yeah, it's like, oh, I gotta be shirtless, too, as I do this. I gotta be shirtless as I ruin this crap for you. I'm so proud of this project of mine. Yeah, none of those are going to work anymore. And uh, you basically just locked away. Freak why? Good Lord, man. Why? Oh, my God. Uh, he posted a shorter follow-up video then showcasing how the table lights up and changes color, going from blue to purple to green to red and back again. <laughs> It actually looks tight. Oh, it's also a solid way to preserve some of gaming's history by repurposing something old into something artistic and functional. Now, if they were busted GBC systems, I could understand this. I could say, look, they're busted beyond repair. You can't fix them. The internals are royally fucked. Fine. I can understand that. You will get no argument from me then that this was a good idea because you can't fix them. That's fine. If, if they weren't fixable, that's fine. However! Yeah, the internet folks are not pissed about this. Oh, sorry, they're not just pissed about this. They're royally pissed about this. So several people bemoaned him for his sacrilegious act. Yes, yeah, sacrilegious. Sacrilege is just... That, that, that's being generous. This is fucking blasphemy. Screw that! This is blasphemy! Blasphemous behavior here. Uh, his blas uh, sacrilegious act. No, no, screw sacrilegious. This is blasphemic. This is a blast. This is blasphemy. 
Yeah, never mind. Yeah, they're both right. Uh, putting people's happiness in an epoxy resin and wasting it. To quote one user, honestly, people are freaking out. Another said drowning them in resin wasn't necessary for the project, while another noted that another method like a glass display would have been lighter and forever customizable. Yes, that actually would have. You know, you, now, to be fair, and I'm going to say this, he could have made a mold. He could have taken a, you know, a f same amount of busted. Let me see. Let me count up how many were in there. Uh, 15. Well, sorry. Yeah. Well, I could just look at the damn article topic. 15. He could have found, okay, 15 busted, beat to hell. Okay? I'm going to say beat to hell. So B-T-H, beat to hell, consoles. Use them to make the mold for functioning ones. Because, genius, you could have had them all turn on and function and just put a glass display up, have your, you know, the mold, put them in so you can take them out and swap them out. It's like, hey, look, I want this one in here now and this one. And you can change up the direction. Your You created a one-stop screw you to gaming history Pissing off people online when you could have done this. I, I'm not going to argue. Good idea. Horrible execution. Because let me make a display with 15 Game Boy Colors in it. But let me make it so I can customize and take them out and put different things in. Like, look, today I want to see the intro screen for this game, this game, for 15 different games. And I can change that out when other people come in. You can't do that when you put them in fucking epoxy resin, you jackass. God, I missed my rant series already. I would have went to town on this. God, I would have went to town on this. Jesus, I would have went to town on this one. But yes, I do agree, though. Uh, if he could have uh, encased this thing in, like, a glass display, it would have been lighter and forever customizable. Yeah, just screw you. Just got to put this shit right in epoxy resin because, oh, I don't care. I'm, I'm Logan Paul. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Jesus Christ, man. I like the one uh, comment on here from Twitter. Uh, quote, fucking hell. Uh, you could have only used all custom shells and button replacements without any electronics in them and done that. But destroying the hardware is just so wrong on so many freaking levels. I mean, the chance of some surviving isn't 0%, but it isn't close to 100% either. Yeah, screw it. No, it is 0% of them surviving. Because you're going to have liquid damage. You're going to have liquid resin damage going into this. That's going to corrode the motherboards. That's going to corrode the chips, corrode the cath you know, control uh, capacitors. See, that's what I was looking for. So it corrode the capacitors. It's it, Everything in those is fucked going forward. The speakers, the buttons, they're all screwed. You can clean that thing up re tremendously. You can take... Disassemble, I think. You can send it to Tronix Fix. He'll probably chuck it right in the trash can. Because that, epo that epoxy is going to screw up any of the chips. You're never going to get that off. And if you heat that stuff up, it's just going to run all over the place, and you're never going to get it off. You are you screwed over 15 Game Boy Colors to make a middle finger to everyone, and you're thinking it's cool as hell. No. By far, though, uh, most people are pressed about lo about Paul allegedly destroying 15 Game Boy Colors because, you see, the handhelds he's supposedly ruining are perfectly fine, according to everyone's speculation, anyway. Never mind that Game Boy Colors are purchasable on both Amazon and eBay, in addition to second-hand stores, thrift shops, and the like, and it's certainly not like he can do what he wants with what he buys, heaven forbid. Um, look... I'm not going to say you can't do something with it, but don't... If you wanted to ruin 15 games, or 15 things, find some that don't work, or take the electronics out of them and sell them to, um, and sell the electronic components to somebody else that can use these to save other systems. And just have the shells. Just get the empty shells. You don't need to put the electronics in this and encase them in an eternal torment. This is disgusting. 
Uh, you're not looking, the author isn't looking to stay in uh, Logan Paul. Uh, the dude's done some questionable things in the past uh, that haunt his present. Qu some? Some questionable things? Some? Some? Try everything. Everything. Some questionable? Some? Everything. Sorry, my friend. Everything. Uh, he's also hardcore into the earth-destroying resource guzzling NFT grift. Uh, which, uh, cool, he isn't exactly someone I'd defend, uh, but this pile, this pile on is indicative of the internet's, or rather, humanity's most toxic quantities. Just live and let live, leave people alone. Um, yeah, I, I can agree on that, but here's the concept. When you do something stupid, and you're encouraging other people to do some, that same stupid thing, somebody needs to stand up and say, ENOUGH! No more! Enough! They have to stand up and say that at some point. Because if you don't, you're gonna have people doing shit like this. Because they're gonna go, Oh, but I understand. I love Logan Paul did this. He did this with his game, boys. So I'm gonna do it with mine. And there's 15 more that are gone. Then 15 more. Then before you know it, you can't find any more Game Boy cars because everybody's done this because they want to imitate him. Monkey see, monkey do. If you have, it's like children. Remember back when you were a child, if you had an older sibling, you wanted to mimic what the older sibling did. If the older sibling was screwing the girl behind the behind the high school tool shed, you wanted to screw a girl behind the high school tool shed. If your older sibling was smoking, you wanted to smoke. If they were drinking, you wanted to drink. It's monkey see, monkey do. Somebody needs to stand up, like I said, and go, BAM! No more! You know, when you get multiple people doing this, yeah, I understand that. Oh, just live and let live, leave people alone, toxic qualities. No, it's not exactly toxic. If you're standing up and a group of people are saying, this is stupid, don't do this, that should say something. Like, look, I I'm not the healthiest person in the world. I am not, and I will openly admit that. When I look at some of these, like, food challenges that people were doing, like Man vs. Food, and I would watch some of these clips, I've been on YouTube lately, I've been watching some, and I look at something and I say, that is unhealthy. That hurts my heart just looking at it. You can take that to the bank. If somebody's trying to say, hey, look, I'm going to swallow Tide Pods, and I say, whoa, that's a stupid idea, what the fuck is wrong with you? And hundreds of other people say the same thing, that's something you should take to the bank! And go, oh, this is a bad idea, I shouldn't do this. I, I really should I shouldn't do this. When you encase 15 Game Boy Colors in resin to make a god-awful display that you want to make it to a fucking table because you're a jackass, you're basically encouraging other people to do this. Again, you should be stopped. And somebody should say, this is a stupid idea. Don't do this. Common sense is long gone. We need a light to cut through the bullshit in the darkness. I guess I gotta be that light. You know, I know the Kirito is always right foundation was the one to do it, but I guess I'm gonna have to step in here. I gotta be the light that cuts through the bullshit. You know, and the batteries for that light don't come cheap. That's for, that's for goddamn sure. I still love that trailer. <laughs> if you're wondering what that was from, that was from that something witty entertainment there uh, when they had their Patreon thing. Kirito's like, the Kirito is always right foundation or carf. Uh, she's never going to call it again because it sounds stupid. Uh, they can't prevent stupid bullshit, but they can make sure that somebody's there pointing and laughing when it's done. Uh, they're going to be the light that cuts through the darkness. But the batteries for that light were cheap. That's when they were like trying to piss their Patreon. But I guess I'm going to have to stand up and start beating the light in the darkness. Oh, wait, I can't. I did my rant series. I ended my rant series because people were getting pissed off at it. There you go, folks. But this is stupid. When somebody tells you, when the internet reacts negatively to you making a resin table of Game Boy Colors, that, that should be the indication, ooh, I crossed a line. I wouldn't look at this as, well, I didn't really do anything wrong. No, I will look at this as, well, I fucked up. Big time. Uh, you can actually see the clip in the article. Uh, viewer discretion is advised. Because, honestly, it's if you're a fan of the old systems, it's going to hurt you. God, it's going to hurt you looking at this. You just... 
You jackass. Oh, you just ruined. You just ruined him. You, you jackass. Oh, you sick bastard. I'm just gonna stick these in here. I'm gonna make them look all nice. Oh, man. Oh, 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 oh. I'm watching it again. It still hurts. Oh, my God, no. And then the blowtorch on top of it. Oh, you sick bastard. Oh, you sick bastard. Then you smile like a smug son of a bitch. Yeah. You sick. You sick bastard. Alright, stop me if you've heard this before, and I'm really not sure, so stop me if you've heard this before. But the sky will be darkened by the wings of many bats. The fallen people will invoke the name of the undead king. And when the clock strikes the hour of the beast, the undead king will reveal himself in his true form as the beast. Then angels will shoot arrows of hope and light at the loved ones of those they have been sent to protect, and a miracle will happen! Please always recycle. Oh wait, this is for a different show. Oh, that's right, that's for a much better show. That was for Digimon uh, Adventure that came out, the 99 version, okay? My apologies. What am I talking about this time? Pop Team Epic! Oh, well, you know what? It's pretty much the foreshadowing of you know, the apocalypse. Hey, guess what? It's the foreshadowing of the apocalypse. Yeah, it's coming back with a season two. Oh, God, why? Um... It's been a while since the 2018 premiere of the Pop Team Epic Anime, no, which adapts the gag manga by, uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, uh, mostly because I have no respect for the author. I I'm sorry, you want to create something that's interesting to you, that's fine. It's a gag manga, I get it. It's a gag series, I get it. I don't find it funny, I don't like it, so I'm, there's my point of it. The series came through with a Christmas miracle. Oh, God. It's a Saturday, all you miracle. We're all screwed. <laughs> the revealing plans for a second season in 2022. Uh, Pop Team Epic Season Two announcement came along with a perfectly with a perfect parody of a shonen manga anthology cover. Oh, oh God, why, why, why? There's also a behind-the-scenes video featuring the voice actor and singer uh, Shoto Aoi, uh, who was featured in the first season. So Crunchyroll streamed the first season as it aired uh, in all of its A-side and B-side glory. I, look, I have no respect for this series, okay? None. None whatsoever! But here's how they describe it. Crude, rude, and a little cute. Get ready for the larger-than-life attitude of Papago and Pimpy. Or, no, it's, sorry, it's Pee Me. Uh, the small and tall stars of Pop Team Epic. Based on the bizarre four-panel webcomic, uh, it comes a comedy that'll throw you off with its out-there jokes and intense absurdity. You think you're ready for these girls? Think again, girls. Yeah, um... Look, this appeals to somebody. I don't know who, but it appeals to someone. That's fine. That old saying again, you can't please everyone. That pulls in many, many, many fashions. And this is one of the things. You cannot please everyone. Well, this does not please me. I, I, I and To be fair, because I can hear somebody out there typing in the comments, but you never saw it. And I, I know somebody. Uh, somebody's going to think to themselves, nobody types in your comments, Andrew. Yeah, I know that. I'm, I'm saying it for... Those that watch this 10 years from now. Well, you've never seen it. Oh, I have, actually. I, I did watch some. I didn't watch the whole first season because I refused to be suckered into it. But yes, I did watch some of it. And yes, I found it disturbing. So I did not enjoy it. I'm not lying. All in all, this is not exactly one of my favorite series Um I think next to Fruits Basket, this ranks um, at least a zero for me. Like a, On a scale of one to nothing, or from one to five, this is a zero. A solid zero for me. And if I had to make a tier list, this would be D tier. Is there is there like a tier lower than D? Because it, it would be that. I would, is there a lower tier than... I'd make it low. Like, super low. Mega Ultra Super Low! It's Giga Low! Giga Ultra Super Mega Low! 
Hell no! That's what it's hell no! Oh hell no! The five levels of absurdity! I'm gonna call them the five levels of absurdity. You have uh uh, mm mm, nope, no way, and oh hell no! Because when you get to oh hell no, there's only one possible step to go, and I haven't met that step yet, but number five right now is oh hell no! Nah, eh eh. No, nope, and oh hell no! Oh hell no! Oh hell no! <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it just sounds so good. But yeah, I'm not a fan of Pop Team Epic. I don't think I ever really will be, so yeah, there's that. Uh, but they are getting season two, uh, apparently coming this year. God help us all. Uh, seriously, God help us all. I mean, at least, hey, we're getting the Devils a part timer season two. That's coming this year. Please. Please tell me it's still coming this year. Don't, don't screw us. Look, I'm willing to wait. We waited eight years. I didn't mind waiting a few more months. Uh, it's supposed to be coming like in July. Please tell me it's still coming in July. I, I, I'm being patient. I'm being I, I'm being good. I, I kind of feel like that kid waiting on Christmas morning for Santa to, to bring him presents. Please, no clothing, just presents. Mountains of toys. I don't, I don't care. It could be like when I was in second grade. I had so much to play with, and I was still bored out of my mind. <laughs> it was true. But, um, yes, I, I would simply go with, uh, as far as Pop Team Epic's concerned, on my scale, oh, hell no. That, that's where I stand. That, that is literally where I stand on it. All right, so with Marvel's uh, multiverse getting maddeningly close, and th that's where they're going to bring back Iron Man, and I'm both okay with it, but at the same time, not okay with it. It's like, I want Iron Man back, but I don't want him back this way. You know, MacGuffin him back in a decent way. I'm still pissed they killed him off in Endgame, and yet gave Captain America the... You know, better ending. That honestly pissed me off. Uh, I mean, it. that honestly pissed me off. Uh, granted, both their contracts were over at the end of Endgame, so that it makes sense from a franchise standpoint, but at the same time, it pissed me the hell off. You killed off Iron Man, for God's sake. Iron Man! Iron Man! Why kill Iron Man? But with it getting mold maddeningly close, it, it feels... You no, know, it doesn't feel good. Never mind. I, I don't like how it feels. You get so many different versions of your comic book faves depicted over the years. This is a vindication. Uh, this is vindication for a lot of people. Uh, whichever one you like best um, is a real delight. But you don't have a cinematic universe for your favorites organized. So even so, there are several long-running series with adaptations fairly different to each other. Different enough that mashing up their variety of varies, yeah, their varied versions uh, would be pretty entertaining. And I'm talking now about anime. Screw Marvel at this point. I'm talking anime. So here's some anime series that they think would work uh, really good in a multiversal situation. So the first one up here is Sailor Moon. Yeah, let, let's take the one um, that was in a Bare Naked Lady song and uh, that got a reboot that I swear, I, that ha I hope that was a translation error for that intro because if it wasn't, um, I have no respect for that, in for that first intro that I saw and I watched the very first episode of Sailor Moon Crystal. So the groundbreaking manga that changed the face of Shujo, uh, specifically the magical girl genre forever is Sailor Moon and has uh, stakes in almost every medium that matters. Uh, different adaptations mean different canons. Yes, and there's also the fact that it's been featured in so many other things, including condoms. <laughs> so we'll never forget, we'll never get over that. It's freaking condom. It was winking at me. It was winking at me! Uh, they'd love to see what the Sailor Guardians of different parts of the multiverse would think of each other. Uh... I'm going to safely say this. If there would be an actual god out there that would be in charge of this, it would be interesting to see them look right at um, Sailor Moon Prime and then look at Crystal and go, what the fuck did you do to our franchise? <laughs> that, would be, that would be heaven for me. Yeah, the 2003 live action series uh, in particular putting some interesting twists on the formula. Uh... 
Minako was an actual pop star, uh, balanced out by some less fun issues. Um, you got, uh, generals were a bit different. Uh, Ami had an evil streak. There was a thriller, deadlier version of Sailor Moon in, uh, in the wings. Oh, and there was the other idol singer who was kind of uh, a barrel clone. Oh, that's good. Uh, so, so, yeah, why not? So, in other words, yeah, a lot to deal with. Yeah, I, like I said, it would be interesting to see, like, the live-action versions meet the, uh, you know, the animated ones. And you have, like I said, Sailor Moon Prime, the one that we know. Looking at the other ones and just looking at the uh, Crystal and go, what did you do to go over our franchise? And they look at the live-action and go, what the hell are you? <laughs> what the hell are you? I can, I can see Full Metal Alchemist. You have the you have uh, the original Full Metal Alchemist series. Then you have Brotherhood. Then you have the live action one. Be like, uh huh. Or better yet, how about we take it one step further? How about? Oh wait, no, that's actually on here. I, I won't ruin that one yet. Hold on. Uh, the next one is Devilman. Yeah, uh, I've actually seen some of the clips of this. I haven't seen a whole episode. I've actually seen clips, and the clips are pretty damn good. Um, yeah, that would definitely be uh an interesting concept. A uh, less aggressive take on on the guy's demon lord Dante. Uh, the series centers on uh, yeah, on good boy Akira Fudo. Uh, he's been merged with a demon, but it's also kind of that he has a demon together. It's something else. Or according to the first anime series, the real Akira is dead, and there's a jackass demon walking around in his body and learning how to love. If only we could get those two Akras to work together. Oh, yeah, that'd be interesting. Here's an evil version of yourself and a good version of yourself. And you two play nice. Come back an hour later. Okay, why'd you kill the good one? <laughs> but then again, uh, I do love their third choice on here. And uh, <laughs> I love... I I, I love how they have this started in this. I, I was laughing when I read this the first time. The third one for the multiverse anime crossovers, dun, 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 is none other than Cowboy Bebop. Wait, come back. That's exactly how it starts. Wait, come back. Whatever your opinions of Netflix's Cowboy Bebop, the fact remains. Seeing the two crews trying to suss each other out would be interesting. Bullshit! The anime version of Spike Spiegel would be whooping the live-action Spike Spiegel's ass. You would have Jet Black whooping Jet Black's ass. You... <laughs> I don't even think Faye would get into this and start beating her up. I don't even think... I think Edward and I would... I, I think those would be the only ones that might be interested, but I think Edward would still find a way to screw over her other self. So yes, I would be all for this. You'd have Cowboy... Bebop Prime, and then the live action, and the live action split off, and you just have them basically blowing up their Bebop. It's like, well, we took care of that problem once and for all. <laughs> In fact, me, I'd be amazed if somebody out there uh, doesn't get like a clip, like make a clip of uh, the Bebop exploding or something like a fake CGI thing that they had to use for Netflix. Have it have like something like that explode with the Bebop, and have it be like the anime version. Somebody do a mashup of that. I would love to see that. <laughs> I would love to see that. That'd be so cool. Uh, yeah, this would be impressive though to see. Um, it, yeah, interesting. My ass. Uh, the backstories are similar enough. <coughs> <laughs> sorry, I, I'm sorry. I couldn't get through that one without laughing. <laughs> the backstories are similar enough. My ass. Uh, that they could recognize themselves, but different enough to shake things up. Anime Spike and Fearless Spike. Uh, probably have plenty in common, but where would they clash when bounties come around? Uh, yeah, the same goes for Faye. How would each perceive the other's coping mechanism? Jet, though, Jet and Jet would just grab a beer and have a chat about how they're the only grown-ups in the room. Some things are canonical across the multiverse. No, I kind of think they would be looking at this going, what the fuck happened to our franchise? And then somebody would just... And then, no, no, I got it. You have Jet, Faye, and Spike seeing their live-action counterparts. And all of a sudden, Spike's, the anime Spike's like, what the hell are they? And then that's when you have Edward just kind of walk through and go, they're the live-action versions of us. And then you have the live-action Edward go through and go, yeah, Netflix canceled us after one season because we suck. And then just like that, they start beating the crap out of each other. 
<laughs> shuffing them out the airlock, and then that's the end of that. They, like, trash the interior of the bee bubble. Looks like a freaking New Year's Eve party that Spike had. It's like, yeah, there we go. <laughs> that's what you need. Um... Oh. Yeah, so what other adaptations would you like to see meet themselves? I, I'm i going to say this. How about Dragon Ball Z and uh, Dragon Ball Z Kai? Have those two meet each other. Um, like I said, Full Metal Alchemist and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Because uh, I remember when I sold uh, the entire... Because I had the original Full Metal Alchemist series. And I sold it, and the one person's like, It's not this many episodes! You're lying! This is a false ad! I've reported you to eBay! I'm like... This is the original series, not Brotherhood. Uh, there was an original series? Yes! <laughs> it's just... Oh, my God. But, yes. I, I'm all for... I'm going to say this. I'm all for the... Uh, I'd be all for a Cowboy Bebop one just to see the anime adaptations with their live-action counterparts' asses. I would be all for this. All of a sudden, be like, what the hell are they? I don't know, but they're in our way. <laughs> I would pay money to see that. That would be so worth it. I mean, Netflix canceled it after one season. Thank God for that. Like I said, you make like somebody out there, one of you intelligent people out there, with you wonderful, kind internet people out there that I respect so much and have the utmost uh, respect and admiration for, please make that happen. <laughs> I want to see a mashup of the live-action version getting their asses beat by the anime adaptation because that one deserves it so badly. <laughs> oh, my God. I, just, I love this. It's so fun. Um, but, yes, um, there's a few of them. Sailor Moon, I think, definitely would be a good one. Uh, Digimon. I could say, like, have Digimon Adventure Zero One meet the 2020 uh, Digimon series. Have those two interact. That would be interesting. Um, Pokemon? That, uh, well, yeah, no, Pokemon, that would work. Have the original, yeah, well, it's all the same continuity, though, unfortunately, so that really wouldn't work. Um, yeah, there, there's a few I could think of. Uh, but yeah, Sailor Moon, Cowboy Bebop, definitely, though. I, I, I would love to see just, just, just to see the anime versions whooping the ass of the live action versions. That would be, oh my god, I would love that. <laughs> Boy. All right, and what better topic to end off the week, the first podcast of the new year, than what's happening in 2022 according to anime? You know, keep in mind that we have gotten a large amount of decent stuff from the world of anime. I mean, there have been a lot of interesting concepts. And let's face it, even movies and that have brought us advances in technology that when the shows came out, were futuristic, but by nowadays standards are completely normal, like tablets and smartphones and things like that. This is just completely, oh, hey, not a problem. But let's see what we got here. So, you know, you can't, okay, so there's an issue. Um, that's gonna be just, all right, so there's an interesting kind of thing here. So if you can predict what 2022 has in store, but there's good news. Thanks to our favorite anime, they can't. Okay, they can't legally make the claim, but here's what's happened in 2022 in the world of anime according to certain anime series. Like, stuff that has happened uh, within that general series in the year 2022. Near light speed travel. So basically, I'm assuming FTL. Uh, time isn't just a flat circle and aim for the top gunbuster. It's a rubber band you can wing across the galaxy. Uh, the Gainax series literally rewrites physics for this legendary mecha anime OVA, in which two girls take down aliens in an enormous mecha, but before they can pilot the gunbuster, they have other missions to attend to. One of those, a near light speed scavenging run, has them leaving in July 2021 and returning in January 2022. So yeah, near light speed. Yeah, you're not too far off. Uh, it's the first time they experience the time displacement that comes from their mission, but certainly not the last. And before long, a few months will look like a quick nap comparatively. Their coach warns them that even a small mistake could make them effectively unstuck in time. Hmm. Replicants break the internet. Oh, this should be good. 
Uh, so appropriately named Blade Runner Blackout 2022 has its own version for this year's happenings. Serving as one of the several bridges between the two Blade Runner series, uh, feature films, um, the Shinichiro Watanabe piece shows how the world collapsed in the run-up to 2049. Uh, replicants Iggy and Trixie have a mission, destroy Tyrell's replicant registry so they can no longer be hunted. The operation also caused a massive, as the title says, blackout, cutting off power in the city and effectively taking down the internet. So you've got to look forward to, th so you got that to look forward to. Fortunately, there will be something else to take up your time. Yeah, great. So in other words, replicants are going to take out the internet. Oh, I was in the middle of downloading this ultimately powerful software that can take on my computer to the next level. God damn it, that was 15 hours of my life wasted. A five gigabyte file on my piss poor internet speed. Oh, it was all wasted. <laughs> but yes, of course. What is the one thing that came in 2022 in anime? If you watch Sword Art Online, you know what it is. It's 2022. It's full dive. Yes, uh, this is the year we can plunge in our senses into a fantasy world and get trapped there until we die. Or until our hero saves us. All hail Kirito. All hail Kirito. Okay, it's a little unfair. Uh, sort out online. The full dive system is pretty rad, though. Uh, divorced from the terrible events of the series, of course, um, like in Gun Gale Online, for instance, uh, you could theoretically have a great time in a VR MMO. Or basically, take this with, like, I mean, we have the Oculus headsets, there is like a VR type thing. Well, it'd be interesting if you come up with a way to do this so that people can enjoy themselves. Think uh, Ready Player One in a way. Massive world that you can explore at your fingertips. The Oasis. We're that close to it. Uh, but how do we do that? Well, you just need to find a way to tap into your systems, tap into the part of your brain that has all the senses that are main control center, and there you go. Of course, you're going to have to hack the brain, and then there's a whole bunch of other problems, so yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but you can theoretically they'll have a good time. Uh, we do, however, recommend you not pop in, pop on any intriguing-looking VR helmets unless you know uh, they have adequate QA first. This is not the year for that risk. Best wishes for a Lightspeed Fully Immersive 2022 and hopefully uh, with few to no internet blackouts. <laughs> Yeah, I, the sad part is that they're going to say this, they're going to jinx it, and I can hear somebody go, They called it the Otaku people called it the fucking Otakus! It's all their fault! Then we're going to get ransacked again. <laughs> I can just see that. But, um, yeah, it, I would be all for a full dive system. I think that is uh, the unique way to go. And if that's the one thing we get out of 2022, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, like a little, like a visor set, like, hey, you have glasses, take this off. You know, you pop this thing on your head, and boom, it automatically adjusts, you know, so your eyes will be able to see. Uh, it takes all that into consideration, and you can have a fun time. Just sit there and just be like, oh, this is great. Oh, yeah, this is fun. I don't got to do anything. My mind's doing all the work. And then you come back, and like, man, that felt good. Yeah, I mean, I, I would be all down for that. I really would. Hopefully, we get something like that in this in this year, Uh do I think we will? Uh, hell no, probably not. But it'd be worth a shot nonetheless. But, you know, there is that. But anyway, though, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, hopefully 2022 is going to be pretty good. Uh, at least, hopefully we get some really cool technological advances. If not, I mean, I'm trying to figure out a way to make a teleporter. If I can figure out, if I can get that cracked, I'm going to be a god at that point. I can tell. I, I can teleport things. I'll transport. I can teleport stuff. Freep, shum, freep, shum, freep. That'd be pretty cool. I mean, hopefully we could get those. Um, but yeah, I'd be all for a full dive system. Screw faster than light. Well, no, actually, I would probably need that for my teleporter. But um, not full dive. I'd be all for full dive. I I'm I'm all for that. Screw the replicants, though. I, I don't need anything taking down the internet. I I don't need a megalomaniac or anything taking down the internet. Uh, well, that would make a pretty interesting science fiction show or movie or series. Hmm. Put a pin in that for later. All right, everybody. We've come to the end for the first podcast of 2022. I'd like to thank you all for hanging out with me for the last, I guess I want to say like a little over an hour maybe. Thank you all for hanging out with me. Hopefully this year is going to be better than it was last year. Who knows? Hopefully it will be. But anyway, folks, till next time, 
Don't forget, I have a Patreon and a Kofi. You can uh, help support the channel. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash webdesigner18 and Kofi uh, webdesigner18. You can check those both out. Links are in the uh, About Me section here on the YouTube channel. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. And I will be here next time. Same Andrew time, same Andrew channel right here on the Web Designer 18 YouTube channel. I'm Andrew Rhodes, and I'm clocking out for the day, folks. I'm gone like Donkey Kong. Catch us later. Bye, everybody. Have a great week, and a Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year.